Hello guys, welcome. This is the patch 2.2c breakdown for Wild Rift. Uh, and as it says at the start of this, this is the last balance patch in this cycle. And what it means by last balance patch of this cycle is that the next patch will be 2.3. However, what they have said is that we are going to be having a um a longer patch so we're not going to get a balance change for about maybe three weeks maybe a month following this one um and there'll be another de dev diary later in the month for what's coming in june and july so that's that's basically what they're saying thanks to g2a for sponsoring the channel reference link in the description below also if you would like to join the may skin giveaway just make sure you subscribe and leave a comment on the video uh, and leave as many comments as you can on any videos that you're able to watch throughout may it will increase your chances of winning a skin and if you want to find out if you won in april if you were commenting on the channel in april there is a pinned comment three videos back the first camille video of the last three is the one where the pinned comment is um, and so you can check if your name is on there and see if you've won. Let's dive into the patch then. So Renekton is the new champion coming. Renekton is a giant crocodile. He's mainly a Baron laner. Um, I'm expecting him to be really strong in the meta. I'm very, very much, very, very much looking forward to doing the Renekton guide because I love Renekton. So Renekton's going to be the big champion coming in, I believe, either this week or next week. We've got some new skins, primarily the Blood Moon skin line, which are they're red. <laughs> uh, they're red and they look like red. There you go. They're, they're cool. They're, they're cool. They, they look red. They're like they're, they're like blood moon worshippers. They're, they're, they're cool skins. Um, we've got some new accessories. Uh, as you might notice, it's um, uh, pride. If, if, you, if, if, if pride is something that is in your country, it will probably be called pride. Otherwise, I think they might be called the jubilant colors. Um, and I think that some of the emotes... Uh, I think we're getting a, an event for Pride regions only, uh, but we're going to have a Jubilant Colors event for some regions as well. So, um, yeah, we're going to have basically two events depending on which region that you're in. If you're in a, and if you're in a, in a region that, that celebrates Pride, like Europe or North America, for instance, you'll get Pride. If you're in a region that doesn't celebrate Pride, you'll get Jubilant Colors. Okay, so Nemesis Duel. Uh, we're going to get another one. It's the same as the Kazix and Rengar, which, by the way, I haven't really seen many Nemesis duels actually take place, so that's probably a good thing. Um, but we're going to get one between Renekton and Nasus. For those of you that don't know, uh, Renekton and Nasus are brothers. Uh, they're ancient god brothers who have continuously fought for a very long time. Um, and essentially, they are foes. So Renekton and Nasus fight continuously. So let's have a look um, uh, what happens if you win the Renekton versus Nasus duel. If Nasus wins, Siphoning Strike strikes all enemies in an area. That is absolutely, I'm, I'm sorry, but that is absolutely broken. It is really broken. Um, if Renekton wins, he will remain at maximum fury during really That's also really broken. This is why I hate Nemesis duels. Both of these things are really broken. The good thing is, though, that NASA, sorry, that Renekton absolutely slaps Nasus in lane. So you should never really get to the stage in the game if you're playing Renekton well that Nasus can actually scale up because Renekton takes a steaming dump on Nasus's head. All right, let's take a look at some of the champion changes. Braum is too good at locking people down, so despite his uh, specific identity as a champion who counters powerful projectiles, his concussive blows stun duration is going down by 0.25 seconds at every rank which i guess levels up each time he levels up his ultimate so his stun duration is going to drop throughout the game a little bit a small nerf definitely affects his level one more than anything else um but you know i think relatively warranted diana diana's attack speed was scaling excessively as she snowballs so they are nerfing it to a hundred percent later on in the game means nothing honestly means absolutely nothing um this is diana still going to be a great champion like 20 percent attack speed on her moon silver blade it, it you know it's it's a decent nerf but it's, her ultimate damage is still insane uh in the mid game you're not going to feel that as much and diana scales you know Di diana tends to snowball pretty hard in the mid game so i don't think this is going to massively affect diana so diana players don't worry it's a little nerf not that big evelyn is getting a hate spike damage reduction um by five five damage but that's five damage every application of hate spike so whilst it might not seem like a lot that's 10 damage on a single cast for instance uh, and uh, the, whilst that's not going to massively impact her um 
her maybe her damage to champions this may actually impact her clear speed which might stop her from getting level five as quickly that's going to be the thing that i think this will have the most impact on and i think evelyn getting level five was a problem so or getting level five quickly was a problem so i guess we'll have to see if this impacts her clear speed or not but it, yeah this may impact her clear speed which will be the, the big the big change fizz is drowning out against early game poke mages in mid with throwing him a life ring for his initial mana issues he's getting a base mana regen cool not gonna make fizz much better it's a small buff is the fact that it's really just the fact that his playful tricks is on a long cooldown in the early game uh, the mana regen i don't really think is going to help you still have to make use of the mana you still have to go all in you still have to know when you can pressure as fizz this is this is going to make good fizz players a bit better but it's not really going to help people who are not that good at fizz in the first place or are just playing fizz a little bit more casually Jax is feeling overly nerfed um so we're going to allow him to scale some mana so he's going to get more mana per level uh, and that's going to increase his mana in the late game by 200 and something two almost three no no 310 in the late game yo is there a case for is there ever a case for mana immune jacks now that he's getting all this extra mana that's what i'm that's what i want to keep my eyes on here um is there a case for mana immune jacks now that he's getting all of this extra mana because otherwise i don't think that i don't think this is like a massively big deal like, like sorry i always think mana changes are like well we couldn't think of anything we couldn't think of anything actually good to do so we're just going to change their mana um this may help his early laning phase it may help his jungle clear without blue buff um but i'm interested to see whether this opens up a build around mana immune because 300 mana is is a it's like having an extra mana flow band in your kit it's actually a pretty big big deal when it comes to giving you you know extra damage so i'm interested in that i'm interested in that Kais is performing uh, too well in high skill play. We're nerfing her wave clear ability and reducing her playmaking potential in the early game. So Ikathian Rain, bonus damage to minions below 35% HP is reduced by 50%, whatever. Who cares? Um, and Killer Instinct, the cooldown in the early game is going up, but is remaining unchanged once you level it up three times. It's a little bit like Evelyn's ultimate change. Evelyn's ultimate change didn't make Evelyn less meta. It just meant that you had to be a bit more careful about when using your ultimate. It's going to be this. I mean, end of the day, how many big team fights do you get in with the space of 20 seconds separating them? Probably not a lot, right? So, you know, I think I, I don't think this is going to make Kaiser any less meta. I think Kaiser is going to remain one of the best AD carries in the meta. In fact, as of now, I think Kaiser just is the best AD carry in the meta. From what I've seen playing, people just pick Kaiser and just win games um lee sin is getting a nerf his passive attack speed is going down by 10 percent again similar to evelyn it will impact his wave clear a little bit but I, again I, I don't think that it's going to make him that bad i think lee sin is still going to remain a relatively high priority pick uh, especially at halos so these these nerfs uh are, don't i don't think they're hitting the right parts of their kit personally but 10 you know he's going to attack one fifth less you know less quickly 10 percent less quickly um compared to where he was previously these are these are minimal minimal margins i don't think it's going to make lee sin much worse um lulu's fallen behind we're giving her extra mana and some extra movement speed i mean the extra movement speed is is, is okay uh mainly due to the fact that uh they nerfed her range pretty heavily and so therefore this might allow her to come in and out of trades in the bot lane but but lulu is not bad like lulu is okay especially when paired with jinx lulu is still a good a good support to be paired with jinx and so you know i think this will i think the mana issues especially like an extra 50 mana in the laning phase is actually pretty nice because lulu does run out of mana pretty quickly um so yeah i i think i think this is i think this is some uh some decent changes to lulu but she's still going to remain that relatively niche pick that you pick to support a hyper carry rather than anything else um lux support is too strong uh, we're adjusting her shield strength so her shield amount on return is getting nerfed by a lot and the ap ratio on return is getting nerfed by a, a decent amount but it's only on return so you're still going to get the barrier on on cast and you're still going to get a reduced barrier on return but you're still going to get a barrier on return do i think this makes lux support unplayable absolutely not i still think lux support is going to be fine her, her shields were overpowered and they did need a nerf 
but you can still play Lux support, especially into specific matchups. The, these, you're still going to get big shields on your on your carries. These are only on return, not on initial cast. Um, so, you know, just to be aware that you, you, you're you only nerfing half of her barrier, or rather half of her shielding, rather than the, the whole thing. Um, and I, I, again, I still think this will probably reduce her power level a bit, but I still think you can play Lux support, and I still think those shields will be relatively high. Pantheon getting um, more buffs. He's had buffs almost every patch, like, like Tristana. His armor per level is going up, so you're going to get five extra armor at level 15. Negligible, given that you're going to get 106 armor regardless. So I don't think that's a big deal. His base damage on his shield vault is going... Whoa, that's, a, that's an 80 base damage increase in the late game. However, shield vault is... No, no, that's a good, that's a good buff. These are good buffs. Um, they're just trying to get Pantheon played a bit more. I still think that the, his first ability damage is a little lackluster compared to the PC, which is why we're not really seeing him get played. But the 80 base damage is nothing to be sniffed at in the late game. That's a pretty big deal. Uh, Twisted Fate is struggling. Um, his red card in particular is not matching up to the rest of his deck. So his area of effect on his red card is going up and the red card slow is going up by 5% at all ranks cool don't think it suddenly makes twisted fate meta gives him a bit more utility if you don't lock a gold card but how let's be real like there are there are very few circumstances in teamfight situations where you want to lock a red card like it's it's more niche to want to lock a red card than it is to want to lock a uh, a gold card gold card is usually the card that you're looking for so any buffs to red card are just buffing supplementary parts of his kit that you don't often want uh to use and you know i think obviously red card is useful if the enemies are all grouped up so therefore you're going to get a bit more aoe damage which will help him but gold card is usually the thing that you're looking for especially in early stages of a team fight um okay so we're getting it we're having some aram changes they're giving us some um some specific aram changes um Camille's damage is going up, Fiora's damage is going up, Jack's damage dealt going up, Lee Sin damage dealt is going up, and they're reducing the amount of damage that he receives. Um, Pantheon damage dealt going up, Seraphine damage dealt coming down, damage received going up, shielding done reduced by 15%, healing done reduced by 15%. So Seraphine was OP in ARAM, so I'm glad they're doing that. Shivana damage dealt going up, and she's getting way more fury per second but to compensate for the fact that you just can't generate fury easily, which I really like because it's going to make AP Shivana a bit more viable. Sona getting the Seraphine treatment. Thank you. Goodbye, Sona. Trindomir damage up, Vi damage up, and Zed damage up. Basically buffing a lot of the melee champions damage application because you, like ARAM is completely dominated by ranged champions. And specifically dealing with Seraphine and Sona is a nice, a nice thing because they were pretty OP. Um, oh, okay. This is a big one. Um, game system changes. Uh, we're seeing players finish their build too quickly, leading to less satisfying power progression in longer games. Additionally, we feel like roaming as a team while ahead comes a little too comes at too little of a cost, which makes split pushing weaker than we'd like. We're taking a small stab at solving these problems by lowering passive gold gain in the mid to late game. Um, it's pretty experimental. So you, there is no change to the gold that you gain. Um, before eight minutes but after eight minutes you're going to get three gold per second rather than four so you're getting 25 percent less passive gold income now to put this into perspective previously you gain uh 240 gold a minute because you got um four times 60 you gain four gold a second you get 240 gold a minute so now you're going to be gaining 180 gold a minute uh, so you're going to be losing around 60 gold every minute from the minute from eight eight onwards. So if the game goes to let's say 13 minutes, uh, you've lost 300 gold passively. 300 gold passively doesn't feel like a lot to me, personally. Personally. So if you go from eight minutes to 13 minutes, you're only losing. Few. But let's say you're going to the late, late game, like we're talking Elder Dragon late game, you're losing 600 gold. If you're going to 19 minutes, you're losing 900 gold. You could potentially be losing 1,000 gold from your, um, your build passively uh, uh just due to the changes here so it might not mean a lot like 12 13 minutes in but if you're getting to 18 or 19 minutes in that's like 1000 gold that you're missing passively which is going to delay late game scaling champions um and potentially potentially make split pushing a little bit more viable to gain gold for the team 
we'll have to see interesting change um i'm gonna have to test that one out and really we're gonna have to do an and then an, an analysis of it once it's already into the game uh but yeah hopefully you guys enjoyed this video uh, a little bit of a breakdown for these champions i'll do a tier list obviously uh in the coming days uh, and obviously i'll do a renekton guide when Renek renekton comes out as well but in the meantime i'm just going to continue my grind to to uh to master tier uh, and i'll see you very soon